hello, and welcome to James Lesser's Express Lane, where we get you out as fast as possible. Bring you the review for Overlord, aka Nazi Zombies. For the first probably 30, 45 minutes, it is just a World War II movie. A pretty damn good one with the visuals. Like the first 10 minutes as they're flying in, like a day or two before Normandy's supposed to, uh, the night before Normandy's supposed to happen, D-Day and all that. They're on the plane, like they got the visual of the bombs being shot, they're flying over, trying to get in, undetected, doesn't, well, not maybe not undetected, just trying to get in, no, far enough, like, oh, hey, we can, no, jump out of the airplane safely. Things go to shit. The group you follow, their main mission is to take out this radio tower. They take out the radio tower, Nazis can't warn, like, oh, hey, all this shit's happening on Normandy Beach, send help. But... As you can probably figure out from movies, that's pretty much not the zombie Nazis, or Nazi zombies, however you want to put it. They find something besides the radio tower. Everybody from the main group, maybe four or five people, die before they even land. And by the time they land, start moving, a few more die. It's just, everybody dies. It's a Game of Thrones, but World War II. It's just... Like I said, like the first like ten minutes of when like they're flying in and doing the parachuting and on them like, whoa! I don't want to blink. I don't want to blink because if I blink, I'm gonna miss something. Just the visuals were amazing, and it's like yeah, a bunch of people just died. It's like yeah, but you didn't get time to meet any of them, so you don't really care that they're dead. Then as you get to know the main characters, you get to know the corporal who's the explosive expert. You get the uh, brash New Yorker, New Jerseyan. You can tell by the accent. There's a few tropes here and there that they use, obviously. But that's why they exist. They get used a lot. But like I said, they're there to take out a radio tower when they find Overlord. Nazi zombies. There's a... And I get... Not, like I said, with like the visuals at the beginning, just like, don't want to blink. Although you can't see my eyes wide open because... I was got my glasses on, but there's some visuals in it. Like, those are just really good visuals. Those are really good special effects. Those are really good, like, prosthetic makeup and all that. For some scenes, I'm wondering if they did, like, what Dawn of the Dead remake did, where, no joke, Dawn of the Dead remake, they went down to a veterans hospital, like, hey, you mister without an arm. You're going to play a zombie that's missing an arm. Hey, you mister with no legs. Guess what? You get to play a zombie with no legs. So I'm wondering if they did that for some of the zombies because it's like it looks pretty fucking good, in my opinion. I'm sure there's gonna be people watching this, reviewing it, going, "Wait, it wasn't accurate." Really, a movie involving Nazi zombies wasn't accurate. Wait, this guy's black. They wouldn't have been so nice to him. Again, Nazi zombies. This is not a based on true story following people. No, this is about Nazi zombies. <sighs> but for the first 30, 45 minutes before they get actually get to the radio tower and all that and find the zombies, it is pretty much a based on true events. The day before Normandy, these people had to get in and blow up this radio tower. Like they had advertised it as that without mentioning the zombies. People would have been... The mom would be like, wait, what? I thought this was supposed to be based on a true story. Where did you hear that? In the ads. Show it. Like, if they hadn't actually specifically said based on a true story, they had just, like, based on a story. Just, like, just try to get people in to think that this was just a World War II movie about a group that had to blow up this radio tower to make Normandy happen. They would have tricked so many people. People would have been like, wait, what the? I thought that was based on a true story. No, 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 they just said based on a story, not a true story. And technically, it is based on a story, one that was written up by Hollywood. But besides the visuals, which were amazing, one issue I had was the audio. There's times where the music is just oh, so overpowering, I swear they blew a speaker in the theater. It's like, what'd they say? The music is too loud, I can't hear what they're saying. What? It's just, like, the background music, like, I get it. You use the background music for dramatic effects. But there's just times where you can't hear what they're saying because the music is so loud. And I 
by the end of the movie, I swear they blew one of the speakers in the theater just from it being so loud. So if you're at home, well, then again, if you're at home, you know, or I'm going to turn down the volume. Well, now I definitely can't hear him talk. I can still hear the background music, no problem. Don't don't worry about that. But you want to be able to hear him talk. There's a bit of subtitles because they're invading France, so you got French, you got German from the Nazis. So there's some subtitles, but not so much. Not like Pan's Labyrinth, where you got to read the entire fucking movie if you're an American and you only know third grade English. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it was just, it's Nazi zombies. The movie. I came in expecting Nazi zombies. I got Nazi zombies and more. I got really good visuals. I got really good opening scene. I got really good action. I got really good prosthetics. It's the same, like, this movie probably has a tenth of the budget that Justice League had, and their CGI looks better. Yeah, no, no, for the one guy, the one, like, the main villain guy, they did amazing work on his CGI. There may have been a couple places here and there. It's like, yeah, that kind of looked off. But, again, 10th of the budget of Justice League did more of their CGI than they did. Fuck, Angry Joe does more of their CGI than they do. <laughs> Not saying much since DC sucks at CGI. But, yeah, it just came in expecting Nazi zombies. Got Nazi zombies. Visuals, 10 out of 10. Audio, 7 out of 10. Turn down the music, guys. Story... Hmm. First 30, 45 minutes, it was just a World War II film until they get to the Nazi zombie part. So storyline is like, this is really set up really fucking well, I thought, in my opinion, anyways. Acting. There was no, like, there was no major names in this. There was no, oh, that's Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, that's Mark Wahlberg. Oh, that's Dennis Leary. Like, there was no major names in this movie. So the acting that you get, I thought was actually really good for probably the price they're paying for their actors. It's like, maybe they weren't unknowns. They might be in, no, on IFC channel TV show or this indie movie. Like uh, the woman who played Domino in Deadpool 2. It's like, she's pretty awesome. Let's look at her. Like, oh, she was in some independent movie, TV, something like She's in stuff before this, obviously, but... It was nothing major. There's no triple A film with a three hundred million dollar budget, and that's pretty much what every single one of these actors and actresses come from. Is they're not coming from triple A, three hundred million dollar budget films. They're coming from, all right, we got two rubber bands and a paperclip. Let's make this work. And you know what? Sometimes those movies are better because they don't have the budget. They got to rely on the acting. They got to rely on the lines. They got to rely on the story. They can't rely on the special effects and bullshit. Which this movie does. It relies on the acting, relies on the story, relies on some great set pieces, and just ah. Uh. If you're not a fan of gore, you're you're not gonna like this movie very much. For the few people that you do get to spend time with, get to know, I guess you start to worry about them. Like I said at the beginning, they kill everybody. First thirty minutes, ninety percent of the people are dead. But that means that they can then focus. On the small group of soldiers who remain. And on their mission, obviously, to blow up the radio tower. Which, oops, turns out to be something more. My favorite line was probably, A thousand year empire needs a thousand year soldier. Take that as you will. Out of context, may not mean much. But if you watch the movie, you'll get it. And you'll probably enjoy it. It's not a big AAA title. It's not something to be winning a lot of awards. But for me, I enjoyed it. Entertainment, 8.5 out of 10. M the music being too loud, so you can't hear sh going on sometimes. Brings it down a little bit, but for entertainment value, bang for your buck, go see it. It's worth saying. If you're into World War II films, Nazi films, stuff like that, it's, like, it's a really good World War II film. If they had cut out the zombies and just made it about taking out the radio tower and advertised it as such, or I maybe want to do as well because most war films don't do that well anymore. Well, I obviously it depends on the story, depending on what it's about. Yeah. But yeah, go see this movie, guys. It's pretty damn good. And as always, like, subscribe, comment down below, and have a wonderful day.